The sea is full of water, tunnel facilities are always under pressure, and the endless impact of ocean waves. What if there is a seawater leakage and infiltration? Do you know how the undersea tunnel is built? After watching it, I have to admire the wisdom of the engineers. For a long time, human beings have never stopped exploring the ocean. Nowadays, although human beings have not completely conquered the vast ocean, they have made many achievements. For example, the subsea tunnel project shared with you in this video. The subsea tunnel itself is located in the sea, so how was it built? In fact, there are many construction methods for constructing undersea tunnels, and one of our common methods is the tunneling method, which relies heavily on tunnel boring machines, aka TBM, similar to those used above ground. Tuned to suit different tunnel diameters, these shield machines are deployed to dig inside the soft seabed soil. During operation, the machine facilitates the simultaneous removal of mud, while reinforcing the tunnel's structure and implementing waterproofing and anti-collapse measures. And as the TBM continuously digs forward, it also simultaneously places prefabricated curved concrete pieces into their position to form a tunnel wall. Of course, the downside of this method is that it is very expensive, as this giant mechanical device must be continuously applied for a long time, while the distance it digs each day is only a few meters. Furthermore, this approach only works well in soft soil environments, so the deeper you dig into the ocean, the harder the work becomes. At this time, it is necessary to withdraw the TBM and continue construction using the traditional mining methods. By excavating a tunnel section with a smaller diameter first, and then proceeding with construction and implantation of reinforcement measures, the tunnel will then slowly be expanded and the same steps will continue to be carried out. As science and technology developed, instead of building and digging a tunnel at the same time, people switched to building a tunnel on the ground first and then placing it underwater. The immersed pipe method is to sink the pipes made on land to the designated position on the seabed and then splice them. This is not just a single section of pipe that can be completed, but to put together the required pipes section by section. The most important thing to pay attention to in this method is the connection between the splicing pipe and the pipe, because if it is not handled properly, there will be water leakage. So, before we start sinking those pipelines, it's crucial to seal up both ends nice and tight. Once the splicing is done, we'll remove those seals, and ta-da! We've got ourselves a fully integrated tunnel pipeline, ready to go. But we're not done yet. Once the pipeline is submerged to the seabed, it undergoes a protective process involving the application of gravel both above and around it. This gravel covering serves a dual purpose, preventing the pipeline from floating away and ensuring the overall safety of the tunnel. A notable example of this methodology in action is seen in the construction of the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge with a staggering length of 6.7 km installed beneath the seabed and still stands as the world's longest immersed tube submarine tunnel. However, it's important to note that the pipe sinking method is best suited for only stable riverbed environments with gentle flows. In turbulent conditions, such as those characterized by strong currents or unstable seabeds, this approach may not be suitable. So in the deep seabed, tunnel facilities are always under pressure and the endless impact of ocean waves. Fear not, because engineers have taken proactive measures to address potential issues. They buried and installed many screens spaced along the length of the tunnel. The monitors serve both as escape signs and integrated sensors that provide real-time data to help engineers continuously assess conditions in the tunnel. By using this monitoring system, they can promptly detect any unusual signs such as fire smoke, pressure, or any signs of water leakage, thereby being able to intervene promptly to keep our tunnel safe and sound. And that concludes today's video. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of undersea tunnel construction. If you found this information fascinating, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. We'll see you next time.